FAA closes investigation of SpaceX's Starship launch mishap, but that doesn't mean the giant vehicle has been cleared for its second liftoff. The Federal Aviation Administration on Friday, said Elon Musk's SpaceX must keep its Starship Super Heavy rocket grounded, saying the company needs to take 63 corrective actions, before it is cleared for another test flight. The FAA has now wrapped its probe into the April launch, which saw the rocket explode mid-flight. SpaceX CEO Musk had claimed Tuesday, in a post on X, formerly Twitter, which he now owns, that, Starship is ready to launch, awaiting FAA license approval. In an emailed statement, the agency said a final report, cites multiple root causes of the April 20, 2023, mishap and 63 corrective actions SpaceX must take to prevent mishap reoccurrence. I've seen dozens of people misunderstand this, that FAA paused Starship launch let me explain in simple terms. SpaceX leads the investigation. SpaceX issues the corrective actions. They pre-write a mishap investigation plan before they even launch. Then they execute their plan if they have an actual mishap. The FAA formally reviews the plan and also the investigation results, and SpaceX recommended corrective actions, but, informally they already know what's coming because of close coordination. The FAA provides feedback, and could recommend adding something if warranted. Their main job is to verify and enforce that SpaceX does, what SpaceX said it will do once they approve the final report. In reality, 90% or more of corrective actions may be finished before the report is even formally submitted just depends on how well the root causes are understood and easy to fix. The general public often believes the FAA writes all the corrective actions, and has a large team of people conducting the investigation, with a heavy hand, e.g., the big bad government. No way. I doubt that will ever be the case for any mishap or anomaly. That is simply not how the government is staffed. The FAA, and their NASA colleagues who have the relevant technical expertise, are typically in super close contact with the SpaceX team, through the head of SpaceX Flight Reliability where the chief engineers reside. If the final approval stalls, oftentimes it is over a corrective action that was too open to interpretation. As an example of what I mean, if a corrective action is worded as such. Redesign of the launch pad to increase its robustness. The corrective actions include, redesigns of vehicle hardware to prevent leaks and fires, redesign of the launch pad to increase its robustness. Incorporation of additional reviews in the design process, additional analysis and testing of safety critical systems, and components including the autonomous flight safety system, and the application of additional change control practices. In order for SpaceX to resume Starship launches at its facility in Boca Chica, Texas, the company will need to implement all corrective actions that impact public safety. As determined by the FAA, and to apply for and receive a license modification from the FAA that addresses all of its safety and other environmental regulatory requirements. SpaceX did not immediately respond to a request for comment. The FAA oversaw the SpaceX mishap investigation, while NASA and the National Transportation Safety Board served as official observers. A full mishap investigation report will not be made public, because it contains sensitive data including U.S. export control information. Starship is the biggest and most powerful launcher ever built, boasting nearly twice the thrust at liftoff of NASA's Space Launch System Megarocket. Starship consists of two fully reusable elements, both powered by SpaceX's Raptor engine, a giant first-stage booster called Super Heavy and a 165-foot-tall, 50 meters upper stage known as Starship. The April 20 flight marked the first time the duo had flown together. The goal that day was to send the Ship 24 upper stage prototype partway around Earth, ending with a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. But Starship suffered a number of problems, chief among them the failure of its two stages to separate. Thus, Starship's autonomous flight safety system was engaged, destroying the vehicle high above the Gulf of Mexico. Other issues became apparent after the dust had cleared. For example, the self-destruct command took longer than expected to manifest, and the enormous power of Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines, caused considerable damage to Starbase. Those engines blasted out a crater beneath the site's orbital launch mount, launching chunks of concrete high into the air. Such problems need to be addressed ahead of future Starship flights, the mishap investigation determined. 
Corrective actions include redesigns of vehicle hardware to prevent leaks and fires, redesign of the launch pad to increase its robustness. Incorporation of additional reviews in the design process, additional analysis and testing of safety critical systems, and components including the autonomous flight safety system, and the application of additional change control practices, FAA officials wrote in today's statement. SpaceX has already done much of this work, according to company founder and CEO Elon Musk. In a post today on X, formerly known as Twitter, the billionaire entrepreneur said the company has made thousands of upgrades to Starship, the launch pad and Starbase's huge launch tower. Environmental and cultural heritage nonprofits sued the FAA after the first Starship test flight, alleging the agency failed to conduct an appropriate environmental review before authorizing SpaceX to move ahead with its launch plans in Boca Chica. SpaceX joined the FAA as a defendant in that matter. The Starship program is critical to the future of the company's Starlink satellite internet business. A global network of more than 4,000 satellites, SpaceX's Starlink provides internet service to more than 50 countries. Actions to eliminate the impact on a city 20 miles east of Brownsville, Texas, but the decision is still a victory for Elon Musk's space company. It involves launching a larger-than-Saturn V rocket that will take astronauts to the moon. The company will consider 75 new rules, including restrictions on road closures and wildlife corridors, as well as less traditional requirements such as preparing a report on the historical context of the Mexican War, before SpaceX received the FAA's final mega rocket launch documents. The license only covers more than 10 launches a year, and is limited to 5 sub-orbits and 5 orbits, easily accessible to the company once Starship is flying which will delay environmental group lawsuits, litigation and at least one other threat in Texas. Another issue yet to be resolved is the rocket's flight termination system, which would be used to destroy the rocket, in case it veers off course during flight. Just less than 90 seconds into its debut flight, the Super Heavy Booster's flight termination system was initiated. However, there was about a 40-second delay between the initiation of the system and the rocket breaking apart. This time lag posed no safety issues with the rocket safely offshore, but it is an unacceptable lag for a system that is supposed to terminate flight almost immediately. Several days after this launch attempt, SpaceX founder Elon Musk said the problem could be solved with a longer detonation cord to make sure the propellant tanks are fully unzipped rapidly. However, he acknowledged that working through this issue with the Federal Aviation Administration may take some time. The longest lead item is probably requalification of the flight termination system, Musk said.